Okay, today is exponential functions. Obviously, you just got done with a whole bunch of really tough trig. We get to move on to something that won't be nearly so difficult. Uh, but, you know, it's still pre-calc. It's just not going to be so incredibly hard. All right, so if we have this, y equals 2 times 2 to the x, that is an exponential because it's got an x in the exponent. I'm going to make, I'm going to forge this a little bit and make this a 12 times 2 to the x. Okay, and here is your base, not the 12, the 2. The 2 is your base, and if there's an x in the exponent, you have an exponential. And this is your start value. Why is it your starting value? When you start a problem, do you get, a lot of times it's time on the x-axis, you know, starts at time zero. Like before you start the experiment, you're at zero, and you stay at zero until you, the second you start it, right? Okay, so at time zero, do you get x would be zero? If I put a zero in right there, do you get that anything, no matter what the base was? You put it to the zero power, and it would be what? Anything to the zero power is what? One. Anything to the zero power is one. Okay. Common mistake, the answer is zero, but I'm just making sure you don't get that goofed up in your head. Otherwise, you'd think it'd be zero times 12, and that'd be zero. And that would mean your start value is irrelevant. So anyway, if you put a zero right here, you get two to the zero, and two to the zero equals one. So then 12 is really important because this whole thing is just going to be one times whatever this is. So that number in front is your starting value. So I'm going to give you a situation. Let's say that we have, uh, we, there's a new thing that just came out in today's paper about the moose in Minnesota. They've had such a rough year for moose. Uh, last the year and the year before that, a whole bunch of moose in Minnesota have been dying. And uh, some people are saying it's a global warming thing, uh, but at the same time, the moose on Isle Royal are going crazy. There's like moose population is going through the roof on Isle Royal because there the, the um, population of wolves is down and so the moose population there is going nuts. So I don't think it's easy to just say, oh, well, it's clearly a global warming thing. Um, but some people are saying that. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, if it's 14,000 moose in Minnesota right now uh, and their population has been... Uh, let's say that, like on Isle Royal, their population has been going crazy. Let's say it's a base of 2. That means that it's doubling. And then this is to the x, meaning if we have it double every year, uh, then this is 2 to the x, where x is years. This is how many moves we start with. This is making it grow. What would make the population of moose stay exactly the same? I change one of these numbers. Which change do I change? The 2. The 2 gets changed to a 1, and everything gets messed up, because then 1 to the anything is just 1, and it'll stay flat. That's like you're just going to keep a totally flat population of moose. Do you think that's likely to happen? No, because some are going to die. Some are going to get hit by trains or by cars. It does happen. Um, and the moose population in Minnesota is actually shrinking, so how do I do shrinking? decimal, like one half. That, let's say that it's cutting in half every year. Now, that'd be a lot. We're not losing that many moose, but population is going down. So, I feel really bad for the researchers. They wanted to figure out why the moose population is going down. So, last year, uh, they went out and found 75 moose calves, little baby moose, and they put the little collars on the baby moose. Uh, and the, the reason I feel bad for the researchers is, you know, that those people really like love the animals, that's why they went into the job and everything. And when they did the like the research after that first year, in the first few days after putting the collar on the baby moose, twenty five percent of the baby moose were rejected by their mothers and were left to die. Probably because they'd been touched all over by humans and had a collar around their neck. Isn't that awful? So they trying to figure out like how to help the Minnesota moose population and then 25% of these little baby moose were left to die. Isn't that awful? 
Anyway, that's on the head, the lead story, one of the lead stories on Star Trib today. So, um, anyway, they're trying to figure out why moose are having such trouble, and now we made it even worse. And again, I feel bad for the people. They're trying to help, but it wasn't helping. So, anyway, uh, if we change this to something that's a little more realistic, what do you think that means about the moose population? Going up or going down? Going down by what percent? 5%. That 0.05 would be the, the rate. And this, they have to tell you whether it's an annual rate or whether it's like a weekly rate or a daily rate. And then you just have to spell that out in your answer. So if I had said there are 14,000 moose in Minnesota, but the population is dropping by 5% every year, you would have written the equation right, except you'd have to say in years. Because it's not super clear. This could be a formula for the moose population dropping 5% every day. That would also work with the same formula. It's just that x would be days, as opposed to, in this scenario, x is in years. So you have to define what your time period is. All right, so that is a typical uh, harder uh, exponential problem. Let's just talk about a few like normal mistakes people make on these. Do you get how people would think that was exponential? It's not though, why not? Because where's the x in the base? And you're supposed to have the x in the exponent to have it be exponential. Okay, so this would not be an exponential. Okay, how about this? Is this an exponential? Tell me another way to write that. X to the, do you remember what power that would be? To the one half. Very good. Square root means one half power. Now, can you tell? Is it exponential or not? No, nope, because there's no X in the exponent. So it's not exponential. Okay, how about this? What if I said Y equals X? No, no, that's not going to be exponential again. How about we try one that is? 2 to the uh, square root of X power. All right, so that's got an x in the exponent, um, but you're supposed to have a x can't, basically x can't be unusual. You can't have x be a fraction power like that. Uh, that would mean the same thing as y equals 2 to the x to the 1 half. Your x has to not be that's complicated. I should get you better language for that. I'm sorry, I can't think of the right terminology, but uh, it would be okay if it was to 2x. It would be okay if it's even to the 2x minus 1, uh, but there has to be an x in the exponent, and your uh, exponent can't have square roots in it, is one of your uh, rules. All right, so this one doesn't have a starting value. If it doesn't have a starting value, then what number could you say is really there and just not showing? A 1. Do you get how this just like there's a 1 there? So now it's got a starting value of 1. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's sort of like if there had been a 4 here, it would have been obvious then that 4 is my starting value. But if there is no number there, if it's just y equals 7 to the x, then that means there's a 1 times in front of it, so the starting value is one. Okay. So, the typical question would be something like this, and they'd say, tell me, what's its base? Is it growth or decay? And is it exponential in the first place? So, is this one exponential? Yes, because there's an x in the exponent. Is it growth or decay? Oh, wait, no. What's the starting value? One. Is it growth or decay? Growth, because this number is not a fraction. It's a whole number. Now, here's the million dollar question. What percent growth is it? I recommend you do. Everybody's going to think it's either 7% growth, wrong. 700% growth, closer, but still wrong. I recommend you always write these this way. One, and then either plus or minus something. 
This 7, would you agree I could write that as 1 plus 6? Why did I separate it off with 1 plus? Because then this is the growth or decay rate. So now tell me. You said it was growth before. What, what percent growth? 600% growth. Because this, you have to move the decimal over two spots, and the decimal's there. So you move it two spots to the right, and you'd have 600% growth. So if you time something by 7, do you get, it's, it's 7 times bigger, but the growth is 600%. Does that make sense to you? A lot of people are going to not get that. They're going to say, okay, uh, 1 times 2 to the x, and I'm going to ask what the growth rate is, and they're going to say 200%. No. If you double something, the growth is not 200%. Let's say you had 40 moose, and you double it. It's 80. Okay, the growth is 40 moose. I had 40 already in the first place. The growth is 40 moose, which is a growth of 100% growth. This is showing you 100% growth. Y equals 1 times 1 plus 1 to the x. There's your growth part right there. That's 100% growth. So when it goes from 40 moose to 80 moose, 80 moose is really broken up into the 40 you had in the first place plus 40 more moose. So the growth part is only this part. Okay. So if you triple something, what percent growth is that? 300% growth? 200% growth. Because if you triple something, you're going like this. Let's say I had seven garden gnomes, and I applied this function. They're apparently quite prolific. They're going to be growing rapidly. Their population is tripling. Okay? But that's not 300% growth. It's what? 200% growth. Y equals 7 times 1 plus 2 to the x helps you see that's the growth part. Timesing it by 1 doesn't make it grow at all. That's the part that makes it grow. That's 200% growth. Okay. So tomorrow is graphing these puppies, but today it's just uh, trying to make formulas for them. And I'm going to show you another kind of problem where they give you uh, some X and Y points, and you are supposed to figure out how much the growth was. So let's say you had this. Uh, 2 turns into 8. 3 turns into 27. This is X. This is Y. Okay. And let's say they said, determine a formula for the exponential function whose values are given in the table. So, the points are like 2 comma 8 and 3 comma 27. Well, first of all, does it look like growth or decay to you? Looks like growth. Could we put this into a formula? Kind of like this. That's kind of what we want it to look like, right? Y equals a, b to the x. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is put in your x and your y point. But it would be really best if you could put in a spot where x is 0. Why is that an important spot where x is 0? It's the start. Exactly. Think about the graph. If you have a graph like this, and you have this spot, the spot where x is 0, and it starts like right there, do you see that the starting value is this? It's however high that is right there. Okay, so it's really handy to know what x, if x equals 0. Now let's just use our brain for a second to figure out what, what x would have to be in this situation. Do you get that if I'm taking 2 and I'm doing something and I'm getting 8, do you know what I'm doing to it? I'm cubing it, right? Took, I took the 3 and I cubed it, and now I got 27. Okay? So, 
At the beginning, what would this have, have been? If x was 0, what would y have been? If x is 0, when it was 2, it turned into 8. When it was 3, it turned into 27. Two to the, okay, hmm. How about this? For this part right here, y equals starting value. Hmm, don't know what, what my starting value is. But I could say two to the x. Two to the second would be four. Oh, that didn't work. About three to the x. 3 to the second would be 9. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, 3 to the x plus 1. 3 to the third would be... No, nope, 3 to the x. Oh, I'm struggling with this one. I'm going to pause for a second while I figure it out. Okay, I figured out my mistake. My data was wrong. Please change your data to be this. 0, 1, 1, 3, and 2, 9. I was using the wrong kind of data. That was not exponential data, and therefore it was really hard to try to make an exponential out of it because it wasn't going to work. Okay, so back to how do I do this? There is a kind of a logical, like, oh, I get how this works, but not everybody's going to follow that. But there's a process that I want to teach you that will always work if you have the right data. Okay, so how do I do this? Your first step is to use 0, 1. Why? Because that's the starting, and that's how you should start the problem. It, all, it really does work the best if you start with the start value. So 0, 1. If x is 0 and y is 1, all I'm doing is sticking it into this general form of the equation. What do I get? 1 equals a times what's b to the 0? Do you get I just solved and figured out that a is equal to 1? A equals 1. Now you go back and you do it again. Except this time, I don't use the start value. I use something else, like maybe that. If x is 1, see, x is 1, and y is 3, stick in the 3 here. Now I have 3 equals a, b to the 1. 3 equals a, b to the 1. So, oh, wait a minute, though. I know A, because I already did that problem before. What did A come out to be? Two seconds ago, we solved and it said A equals 1. So now I can put a 1 right there, and now it's just 3 equals B. Do you get how I figured it out in two little parts there? First, I figured out what A was. And once I knew that A was 1, I could stick a 1 in here for A, and now I've got... 3 equals 1 times b, which pretty much means 3 equals b. I just figured out b. I know a is 1. I know b is 3. Now I can do it a third time and say y equals a b to the x. That's the general form of it, except now I know a is 1 and b is 3. Okay, I'm going to give you some more data here. Well, let's say I had 0 goes with 12 and 1 goes with 4. Everybody start with this. And I encourage you to stick in the starting value. Start with the starting value. That one. Stick it in, then you'll know what A is. I know it's kind of easy in this case, but as we move on, that starting value will be harder and harder to figure out. But start the starting value. Then you'll know A. Then, once you've got A, write the equation again and stick in this other point, and you'll find B. When you're all done, you should be able to say, oh, it's Y equals 6 times 2 to the X or something. That's not it, but something like that. You figure out what A is and B is. Start with sticking in 012. C 
seeing a lot of blank looks, so I'm giving you some heavier duty hints here. Raise your hand if you've got it. I can't tell if you're lost or not. Yeah, all of you already have it. Oh, okay. Only five people have it. Okay. The, the whole thing. Okay, so for right now, all we're going to get is what A is. Okay, so that's the easy. That, that, that should be easy. I hope at this point you can see B to the 0 is equal to 1, and so therefore what's A got to equal? A equals 12. Are we done? No. We just did the first point. Now stick in the other point. And stick in that A is 12. You know that A is 12 now. You don't have, you don't have to like leave that as A. You know A from now on for this problem, A is 12. This should ring a bell. We've done problems just like this before. Do you remember when we had the vertex on something? We had another point. We could stick the one number in and solve. And then you stick in another number and you solve. I'll remind you about that in a minute. but Because review like that is good too. We just solved two seconds ago. Figured out A is 12. 12 goes here. Now we stick in this other point. X is 1. Y is 4. 4 equals 12 times b to the 1. So i got to solve and get b alone now. b to the 1 is just b, so I'm going to make it a b. So then what am I going to do? Divide by 12. b is equal to 4 twelfths, also known as 1 third. So now I know a, and I know b. And now you do it one last time. You write out y equals a, b to the x, and you stick in, if a is 12, put a 12 there. And if b is a third, put a one-third right there. There we go. Now you got an exponential. We know the start value is 12. And this is one-third. Now I've suggested that you write that as a one plus something or a one minus something. Would you agree that one-third is the same as one minus two-thirds? That is identical to the other one. One minus two-thirds is one-third. Why is that good? Because I can see what the decay rate is. Do you get this is not growth, it's decay, and it's decay of two-thirds, which is the same as 0.66, which is repeating, which is like 66% decay. All right, that's the more advanced. I'm trying to pre pre-teach you that. You don't even have to know that today. All right, so uh, mostly today, you're learning this technique of you you take a uh, equation, or excuse me, take some points that are given to you, and you find the equation in exponential form. I want to remind you, we did this before. Remember that we had a vertex, and it was like one comma four, and then we had another point that was like uh, two comma twelve. Do you remember in those days we were doing this for the for a parabola? It was a x minus h squared uh, plus k. Does that ring a bell? And the vertex was here and here. And that's where you'd put the vertex. You know, see so here's the vertex, and we'd put it in in that spot. And the x and the y. Here's an x and here's a y. They would go in for x and y. And once we put all those things in, we could solve for a. We could find a. Seems like a year ago we did that, but we did that. Okay, here's another one. y minus y1, not equals, y minus y1, m, x minus x1. I was doing some calculus to prepare for that big test I had to take uh, about a week ago on Saturday, like one week, a week and two days ago. That was one of the things I had to know. Remember us doing that at the beginning of the year? We give you two points, like 2 comma 7 and negative 9 comma 9. Do you remember how to do that? You find the slope with the two points, and you put it here, and you take one of the other two points, this guy, and you put it in for x and y. And then your equation has y minus, and let's see if I'm going to use this as 7 equals the slope. Let me think, 9 minus 7 is 2 over negative 9 minus 2 is negative 11 uh, times x minus, and the x is 2. 
There we go. That's on the top 20 sheet I've been doing for a long time with you because I know how important it is. Once again, they give you two points and you stick them into a big equation and you figure out the new equation using those points. Same thing today. We give you some points on a table and you have to know this. Y equals AB to the X. Okay, so let's say I had 0, 12, and 1, comma, 15. First, figure out the A term. Then, rewrite this out and stick in the XY for the, not the starting value, for the other one. So start with this one. Okay, so this should have been fairly easy. You should have said to yourself, okay, x is 0, y is 12, 12 equals a, b to the 0 is just 1, so it's just 12 equals a, so a equals 12. That was easy. Now, on the next time you do it, you're a little smarter. Your A isn't A anymore. It's 12. That cell phone needs to go on my desk. Now, the X and the Y for this point right here, the X is 1. The Y is 15. And I just stuck another point in. 15 equals 12. B to the 1 going to divide both sides. B to the 1 is just B, so I'm going to divide both sides by 12. Cancels that. And 15 twelfths. Can I reduce that? It would be nice if I could reduce that. 3 goes into both of them, so what is it? 5 fourths equals B. Now, I know A, I know B. Now I write it for the third time. Y equals A, B to the X, except I know A. A is 12. I know B. B is 5 fourths. Put it in a parenthesis. 12. That looks like 1.2. I'm going to fix it. There we go. 12 times 5 fourths to the X. And is that one growth or is that one decay? If I write that as 1 plus something, it'll make it easier. What is 5 fourths the same as? 1 plus one-fourth. And so that is growth. One-fourth the same as 0.25. What percent growth is it? 25% growth. All right. You getting this? Raise your hand if you feel comfortable with what we just did. Okay, good. Then let's start your homework together. You, if you look at the Google Drive, we have advanced to the Chapter 6 folder. Congratulations. And that's, did you notice we didn't use sine, cosine, or tangent of anything? So, you've made it through trig. That was the hardest part. Now, some of you still have to take a couple tests because some people miss tests. How many of you are missing at least one test at this point? All right, that's six of you or whatever. So, you guys need to make sure you stay focused on that, get that done. But uh, other than that, the rest of you can not worry about trig until we start the review for finals. And, of course, you will come back again at finals. All right. Which of the following are exponential functions? This first one catches some people sometimes. That is not an exponential. Why? There's no what in the what. There's no x in the exponent. Okay, good. Uh, number two is number three. Not allowed to have funky powers. Oh, and hey, this x is not in the exponent also. It's got an X in the base. Not supposed to have that. It's supposed to have the X only in the exponent. All right. Determine a formula for the exponential function whose values are given in the table to the right. First it says F of X. Then it says G of X. For those following at home, this is problem four, and it's asking about F of X. F of X. So just ignore the G of X for now. We'll use that on the other problem. So there's the X and the F of X part. 
This is like x, this is like y, right? Isn't f of x pretty much the same as y? So it's like giving you an xy table. Okay? Now, did they give you the starting value? The starting value is always where what? x equals 0. There's my starting value. So, I suggest you have write out this three times. y equals a, b to the x. And the first time, you stick in the starting value. The second time, you're going to stick it in, except you'll know what a is. Because you'll have figured out a, and you'll be able to stick it in there. And then the third time, you'll know what a and b are. And you'll write it y equals a, b to the x, except you'll know a, and you'll know b, question mark, question mark, and you'll put it to the x. Okay? All right, so the first step, sticking in 0, comma, 3 halves, or 1 and a half. y equals, oh wait, y is 3 halves. So 3 halves equals a, b, they don't tell me. The x is 0. b to the 0 is what? 1. So that just disappears because 1 times a is just a. So there we go. And a is 3 halves. Yay. There's my first time. My second time. y equals a, b to the x. Except this time I knew more. a is 3 halves. And now I can stick in any other point. If given a choice, pick something where x is, you know, x and y are both relatively easy to do. I personally would pick either this point or this point, one of those two. I'm going to choose this point. So I'm going to stick in y equals 3 halves b to the x, except x and y are, x is negative 1, and y is 3. Now I just have to solve for b. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 thirds. I could multiply both sides by 2 and then both divide both sides by 3. That is smart too, because we've taught you all along to clear fractions by doing times 2 on both sides. See, no, no more fractions. 6 equals 3b to the negative 1. Now I can divide both sides by 3. b to the 1 equals 6 thirds, which is also known as 2. And then how do I get a negative 1 off of there? I put it to the power of what? Come on, we want to get b alone. we got to get a power of negative 1 out of there. Maybe it's been too long. Put it to the negative 1 power. That way, it's b to the negative 1 times negative 1, which makes b to the 1, which is just b. And how do you do 2 to the negative 1? What's to the negative 1 power mean? 1 half. Now, here I figured out a... A was 3 halves. Here I figured out B. B was a half. Now I do it a third time. And this time I write in what I know. Y equals A, B to the X. I know this time that A is 3 halves. And B is 1 half. There is my exponential equation. First thing you put in is a starting value. Second thing is any point that you think would work nice. Could you have put in 1 and 3 fourths? Absolutely. That actually been slightly easier now that I look back on it. But any of these points would have worked for my second point. But the only, there's only one start value. And there's only one start value. That's the one you got to start with. Yes? Absolutely. I love it when people want to write this as 1 plus or minus something. And to make 1 half, I'd have to have 1 minus a half. And that's awesome because then you know then when I ask the next follow-up in the later assignments, what's the growth or decay? And you'd be able to say easily, oh, that's decay of 50%. Either this one or this one, either one of the ones I put in a box would be great. Okay, there's the process. You got some to practice. And they all give you a, a whole bunch of points. They just sometimes start to give them to you in different ways. Like, 
wait a minute, all the other ones had a chart. This one's still got two points. Can you tell which one's the start value? Pretty easy to tell. Start value is the one where x is zero, so there it is. There's your start value. And they only give you one choice for the other point, so it's easy to decide what to pick. So you do it three times. Y equals AB to the X. Y equals AB to the X, except this time you'll know what A is. And the third time, Y equals AB to the X, and you'll know what A and B are, and then you'll be done. Okay, so the starting value on this guy, if I put in X is 0 and Y is 3, pretty easy to say that A is 3. Now I got A. Y equals 3B to the X. So I put in A is 3. And now I stick in the other point, 2, 6. I think I'm going to be giving you too much help if I do all of these. So, All right, this one, some people are going to freak out because it has a letter in it. You do it the same exact way. Just do it until you get to the part where you're like, wait a minute, what's E? Do you remember that E is actually a number? Do you remember the number? About, it's a three decimals about. 2.5. I'm going to write this down, 2.718. Is it on your calculator? Yep. Calculator's got an E button. I think it's right above the, I may know where it is. Divide key. Right above the divide key is where E is. All right. Here it's just got, one's a decimal. That's the only difference from the next two. They still have start values. that are easy to see. And then this is just reminding you about which kind are exponential and which kind aren't. If there's no x in the exponent, it's not exponential. All right. I'm going to put a few of you to sleep, but hopefully most of you have learned this. And your assignment is on the board here. And I I think it's small enough that I don't need to have you skip a whole bunch of these. Um, I guess 12 and 13 are kind of redundant if you want to uh, skip number 12. That'd be fine with me. Skip problem 12, do the rest. One of them's even multiple choice in there, so. You know what? I'll have you, skip. you can skip number 7, too. I don't think there's anything particularly genius about that one. So 7 and 12. Skip 7 and 12. That makes it more doable. My deal, I try to make your assignments doable. Your deal, you just need to do them. And don't let down now that you're like, oh, now it's the easy stuff because trig is over with. It's still pre-calc. It wasn't like a walk in the park before trig. Trig got hard at the end, no doubt. The average score on that test, even on the retake, was still a C. So there's one test that just kicked everybody's butt. But it really, just most of you figured out the other ones. So I've got those scores for you, too. All right, that's all I have for the video for today.